you may begin. Hello, my name is Joshua Hughes, and I am an exuberant member of the Wellingboro, Burlington chapter of the New Jersey Orators. Today, I will present in the category of Oral Interpretation of Prose. The title of my piece is To My Old Master by Jordan Anderson. I chose this piece because I found it interesting that someone would think a slave would come back to them after they'd been free. Jordan Anderson was born in December of 1825. By age seven or eight, he was sold as a slave to General Paulding Anderson of Big Spring, Tennessee, and was passed on to his son, Patrick Henry, or P.H. Anderson. He was probably passed on as a personal slave or playmate since they were around the same age. Jordan married Amanda Mandy McGregor, and the two would eventually have 11 children together. In 1864, Union Army soldiers camped on the Anderson Plantation and freed Jordan and Mandy, who then settled in Dayton, Ohio. There, Jordan found work as a janitor, servant, coachman, and hostler, until he became a sexton at Wesleyan Methodist Church, a position he held until his death. He died in Dayton at 81 years old of exhaustion and is buried in Woodland Cemetery, one of the oldest garden cemeteries in the United States. His wife Mandy died April 12, 1907, and she is buried right beside him. And now I will present To My Old Master by Jordan Anderson. Sir, I got your letter and was glad to find that you had not forgotten Jordan and that you wanted me to come back and live with you again, promising to do better for me than anybody else can. I've often felt uneasy about you. I thought the Yankees would have hung you long before this for harboring ribs they found at your house. I suppose they haven't heard of you going to Colonel Martin's to kill a Union soldier left there by his company in the stable. Although you shot at me twice before I left you, I did not want to hear of your being hurt, and I'm glad you are still living. It would do me good to go back to that dear old home again and see Miss Mary, Miss Martha, and Alan, Esther, Green, and Lee. Give my love to all of them and tell them that I hope we will meet in a better world, if not in this. I would have came down to see you all when I was working in the Nashville hospital, but a neighbor told me that Henry intended to shoot me, if he ever got the chance. I want to know, particularly, what the good chance is you propose to give me. I'm doing tolerably well here. I get $25 a month with victuals and clothing, have a comfortable home for Mandy, the folks call her Miss Anderson now, and the kids, Millie, Jane, and Grundy, all go to school and are learning well. <laughs> the teacher says, Grundy has a head for a preacher. The children attend Sunday school, and Mandy and me attend church regularly. We are kindly treated. Sometimes we overhear others saying, them colored folk were slaves down in Tennessee. The children feel hurt when they hear such remarks, but I tell them it was no disgrace in Tennessee to belong to you. Men of darkies would have been proud, as I used to be, to call you master. Now if you will write and say what wages you will give me, I'll be better able to decide whether it will be to my advantage to move back with you again. As to my freedom, which you say I can have, there is nothing to be gained on that score, as I got my free papers in 1864 from the Provost Marshal General of the Department of Nashville. Mandy says she'd be afraid to go back without some sort of proof that you were disposed to treat us justly and kindly. And we have decided to test your sincerity by asking you to send us our wages for the time we served you. 
This will make us forgive and forget old school and rely on your friendship in the future. I served you faithfully for 32 years and Mandy 20 years. At $25 a month for me and $2 a week for Mandy, our earnings would amount to $11,680. Add to this interest for the time our wages have been kept back, and deduct the money for clothing, three hospital visits to me, and pulling a tooth for men. And that balance will show what we are justice entitled to. Please send the money by Adams Express in care of V. Winters Esquire, Dayton, Ohio. If you fail to pay us for our faithful labors in the past, we can have little faith in your promises in the future. Here, I draw my wages every Sunday night. But down in Tennessee, there was no more of a payday for the Negroes than there was for the horses and cows. Surely there will be a day of reckoning for the fraud and the In answering this letter, please state if there will be any safety for my Millie and Jane, who are now both grown up, beautiful girls. You know how it was with poor Matilda and Catherine. I'd rather stay here and starve and die, if it come to that, than have my girls be brought to shame by the violence and the wickedness of their young masters. You will also state if there have been any schools opened in your neighborhood for the colored children. The great desire of my life now is to give my children an education and have them form virtuous habits. Say hi to the George Carter for me, and thank him for taking the pistol when you were shooting at me. From your old servant, Jordan Anderson. Thank you.